Hello, gem hunter. Did you know that you can find gems in rivers? That's right, especially if you live near a place with running water, be it a stream or a waterfall. So if you like to hike in nature, you should know that in these places, there are gravel pits full of very rare gems, which means that if you do what I'm going to show you in today's video, you'll be able to find gems in your area if there are any waiting to be discovered. And as hard as it is to find gems, you should know that in terms of odds, it's easier to find a precious stone in nature than it is to win the lottery. So keep your eyes open, because after watching this video, every river will be a new opportunity to find fortune in the form of gems. When you hear about river prospecting, the first image that may come to mind is that of prospectors in a river, bent over, patiently sifting through gravel and sand, looking for something valuable. If you've ever seen scenes like these, you know that they reflect a real and ancient practice when it comes to searching for precious stones and metals in rivers. But what you may not know is that these treasures, such as diamonds, rubies, and even gold, can be found in almost any river. But how do you know if there are gems in the river? Well, the only way to find out for sure is to look right into the river. That's why this video is important because it serves as a step-by-step -step guide to discovering gems in any river in your area, even those that have dried up. The first thing you need to know before we talk about the gems themselves is to understand the geological process that brings these gems to the riverbed. Most gemstones, such as diamonds, are formed in the bowels of the earth, in the midst of magma, at unimaginable depths, under extremely high pressure and temperatures. Over millions of years, however, Geological processes such as volcanic eruptions, erosion, and the shifting of tectonic plates bring these stones to the surface. As this lava cools, the flow of water, whether from torrential rains or rivers, along with erosion, plays a crucial role in transporting these gems, carrying thousands of gemstones from their origins to the riverbeds. Many of the stones carried along the rivers tend to have a polished appearance due to the constant friction and impact with other rocks in the riverbed. Over time, this natural process produces stones with rounded shapes and smooth surfaces, making them easy to identify for gemstone seekers. This aspect is known as rolled pebbles and is common among stones found in rivers. Quartz is undoubtedly the most common type of crystal found in rivers around the world. They come in a wide variety of colors and shapes and often contain inclusions that reduce their commercial value. However, among the common quartzes, there are those that have gem quality and can be cut to create beautiful, valuable jewelry. Among the types of quartz you can find in rivers are crystalline quartz, transparent and sometimes mistaken by the uninitiated for glass or diamonds. This type of quartz can be valuable depending on its purity. Smoky quartz, it has a grayish or dark brown color. Purple quartz, with a soft, consistent color, it is highly prized for decorative pieces and jewelry, better known as amethyst. Blue quartz, the rarest of all with slightly bluish tones. Green quartz, also rare and can be confused with other rare stones of similar color. Dendritic quartz, characterized by internal patterns that resemble tree branches. Hematite quartz, with a reddish hue due to the presence of iron oxides. These types of quartz can be mistaken for common stones by those who are not accustomed to searching for gemstones. So when exploring a river, keep your eyes open and don't be fooled by the simplicity of a worn stone. Depending on their clarity and size, some of these stones can be sold for reasonable prices. For example, a kilo of carnelian agate, a red variety of quartz, can be worth up to $20. And when cut, these stones can increase in value even more. Next are topazes, rare but possible to find. Although less common than quartz, topazes can also be found in rivers. They usually appear as transparent stones with light shades of blue or yellow. With wear and tear, they can resemble quartz, but there are a few ways to tell the difference. One important clue is that topaz is significantly heavier than quartz due to its greater density. In addition, topaz is harder and cannot be scratched like quartz. 
If you find a stone that you think is topaz but are not sure, try comparing it to a quartz of similar size. If the weight is greater, you are probably holding a topaz. To confirm this, you can perform a simple relative density test using a precision balance in water. In terms of value, rough topazes can range from $20 to $200 per kilo, depending on quality and color. Blue topazes in particular are highly prized and can be cut into jewelry, further increasing their market value. Garnets, stones of intense color. Garnets are another gemstone found in rivers. Although garnets come in a variety of colors, the most common is red, known as Cape Ruby. Don't confuse it with real ruby though, as garnet is a completely different stone. When rolled down rivers, garnets can take on an almost spherical shape due to their dodecahedral crystal structure. Garnets are heavy for their size, which makes them easy to identify. If you find a red or reddish brown stone that weighs more than expected, you may have found a garnet. These stones are valued by their color and translucency. A high quality cut garnet can fetch prices in excess of $50 per gram. Sapphires and rubies. Among the most valuable gemstones found in rivers are sapphires and rubies, both of which are derived from the mineral corundum. The difference between the two stones lies in their color. Rubies are red, while any other color of corundum is classified as a sapphire. These stones are incredibly hard, second only to diamonds on the Mohs scale. Sapphires and rubies can be found in rivers, especially in areas where ancient mountains have eroded over time. However, even stones of lower quality can be worth thousands of dollars per kilo, while those of higher quality can be worth up to $100,000 per gram. Diamonds. Of all the gems found in rivers, the diamond is undoubtedly the most coveted. Formed in the depths of the earth under extreme conditions of heat and pressure, the diamond is composed of pure carbon crystallized in a unique way. Its unparalleled brilliance and hardness have made it a universal symbol of wealth and power. Diamonds are brought to the surface by volcanic eruptions and are found primarily in rocks called kimberlites. Over millions of years, the process of erosion can carry fragments of diamond-bearing kimberlite to riverbeds. From there, the current can carry the diamonds for miles, even depositing them on the beaches where the rivers flow. Finding a diamond in a river is rare, but not impossible. Experienced prospectors can spend days removing gravel and sifting riverbanks before finding a single stone. However, there are cases of people accidentally finding small diamonds while exploring riverbanks or engaging in recreational activities on rivers with a history of mining. The key to identifying a rough diamond lies in its physical characteristics. Unlike other gemstones, a diamond has a unique luster and its surface is extremely hard and can scratch any material except another diamond. If you think you found a diamond, there are some practical tests you can perform. For example, rub the stone against ordinary glass. If the stone scratches the glass without being damaged, this could be a sign that you have a diamond on your hands. In addition, superior brilliance and considerable weight compared to other stones can be other indicators. The value of a diamond varies dramatically depending on its size, color, and purity. A small, rough diamond can be sold for up to $1,000, while larger, high-quality stones can fetch millions of dollars. If you find a diamond and want to be sure of its authenticity, the best thing to do is to go to a gemologist who can examine the stone with the proper equipment. Amethysts and other varieties of quartz. In addition to the common quartzes we've already mentioned, there is a very special variety that can also be found in rivers, amethyst. Amethyst is one of the most valuable stones in the quartz family and is easily recognized by its beautiful purple color, which can vary from a pale shade to a deep purple. Amethyst is formed in volcanic cavities called geodes. And in some cases, fragments of these geodes can be carried by rivers. Like other quartzes, amethyst that has been washed down a river has a smoother, rounder appearance and can be mistaken for an ordinary stone if not examined carefully, but its characteristic color makes it easy to identify. In its raw state, an amethyst may be less vivid than after it has been cut, but it still attracts attention because of its unique tone. A good quality amethyst can be worth about $20 to $50 per kilogram. And if it is cut, 
its value increases considerably, especially if the stone has a vivid color and no visible inclusions. In the case of river agates, water and friction wear away the surface of the stones, leaving them smooth and rounded, but their vivid colors can catch the eye of passers by mine. Carnelian agate, with its red-orange color, is one of the most popular. These stones are formed when silica-rich minerals are deposited in cavities in volcanic or sedimentary rock, slowly filling the space and forming colored layers. Although many agates don't have a high commercial value, they are widely used in jewelry and decorative pieces because of their unique beauty. Larger, well-formed stones can be worth more, especially when used in handcrafted pieces. Cut agate can be transformed into necklaces, bracelets, rings, and other jewelry, transforming a simple stone into a piece of considerable value. Another interesting type of stone found in rivers is petrified wood, which is formed when old trees are buried by sediment and, over millions of years, the organic materials in the wood are replaced by minerals such as silica that preserve its original structure. The result is a stone replica of the original wood, often with surprising details such as growth rings and bark textures. Petrified wood can be found in rivers that flow through areas where ancient forests have been buried. The pieces found in rivers are often smaller due to erosion and water transport, but they are still highly prized by collectors and geologists. Aventurine is another gemstone found in rivers, usually in the form of rolled fragments. This stone is a type of quartz that contains small inclusions of minerals, such as mica or hematite, which create a sparkling effect known as aventurescence. Aventurine can come in a variety of colors, including green, blue, and brown, with green being the most common and prized. Valued for its distinctive sparkle, aventurine is often used to make jewelry, amulets, and decorative objects. Although it is not as valuable as stones such as diamonds or rubies, its natural beauty makes it very popular with artisans and jewelers, and cutting aventurines can further enhance their brilliance, increasing their market value. Searching for gemstones in rivers is a real adventure, but it doesn't require just luck. With patience, dedication, and knowledge, you can begin to identify a wide variety of precious gems. Each river holds unique and precious secrets, waiting to be revealed to those with a keen eye and a desire to learn. Exploring the characteristics of each mineral, understanding its signs in nature, and honing your skills over time can make this journey not only fascinating, but potentially very lucrative. And of course, having access to informative materials such as our Gemology for Beginners ebook can be the key to furthering your understanding of the world of gems and minerals. In addition, our videos delve deeper into the subject with practical tips you can apply to your own adventures. Have you ever found something interesting in a river or waterfall? Keep watching and exploring because with each new piece of information, you'll be better prepared to discover something incredible. Who knows, maybe your next adventure will lead you to one of these rare and precious stones. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Good luck, Gem Hunter.